Hi everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. A lot of you ask me the question on how do I install Shimano brakes straight out of the box. So in this tutorial I'm going to cover the Dior SLX XT XTR from the last two generations. Two pot, four pot, they're all the same. So let's get to the installation of the Shimano hydraulic disc brakes. All Shimano brakes come pre-filled with Shimano mineral oil and it used to be that they were coming with all the hoses attached. These days Shimano still ships their brakes filled with oil, however you have the lever separate from the hose and I think that's a better option for a couple of reasons. First of all, you avoid the step of cutting the attached hose that would always be a bit too long. Second, you get the option to install the levers the way you want them. European or moto style versus North American, they differ. In this case, you make the decision. But if you're only ordering one brake, you gotta be careful to order the appropriate left or right because they will come with the 1 meter long for the front, 1.7 meter for the rear. With all that being said, step one is take the user manual and I would say throw it away, but if you don't know the name of the parts, take a look at it. In here you typically have two installation bolts and one of those safety clips, an insert, front brake only, so only in one of the two boxes you're going to get this bleeding block, and it used to be that Shimano included these two halves with the front brake as well. Not anymore, but we'll talk about this later as well. The two bolts provided with each post mount caliper may or may not be what you need. The frame or the fork might be ready to accept 160 or 180 millimeter discs. So, if your frame is ready to accept 160 millimeter disc, just install your caliper like this, you're good to go. If you want to install a bigger disc instead, you're going to need two things. One is this adapter here, or spacer, and two, it's going to be longer bolts. If you want to put 200 millimeter rotors, obviously this is going to be an even bigger spacer, but I'm going to link these in the description below. For example, here's a 180 millimeter disc installed on a fork that accepts 180 as a minimum. There is no need for the spacer and the small bolts can be used. In contrast, this Fox fork can take 160 millimeter as a minimum disc. So I had to use the adapter long and longer screws for this 180 disc. The rear brake installation is no different. This frame is ready to accept 160 millimeter discs na natively. I have a 180 installed here so you can see the adapter and obviously the longer screws. This is installed in what's called a post mount, 74 millimeter apart threaded holes. But if your frame only has these two threadless holes, 51 millimeters apart, those are IS tabs or IS mounts, and you see here a post to IS adapter that's needed in order to install these calipers. Okay, so with all those details out of the way, it's time to install the brakes. And obviously, if you already have brakes installed, you will remove these first. Front brake removal is very simple because you only have this little clip attaching the hose to the fork. The rear brake, as you're removing it, you might have to cut the hose, especially if the hose is routed internally as you see it happening here on this intense. Routing hoses internally, especially brake hoses, is a bit of a pain, but I have a video on my channel talking specifically about that. Shimano brakes, Dior and up, come with a two-piece bar clamp, so four millimeter hex to remove the screw or to install it afterwards. And if you look here, there is a little hole that says push to open right next to it. Use a two millimeter hex, push it in, and that releases your bar clamp. This is an iSpec 2, but iSpec B, iSpec EV, the newest one introduced by Shimano, are exactly the same. If you're happy with the cable routing here up front, then you can use the length of the previous houses as a template. Cutting hoses is a transferable skill because you're gonna have to do this when installing the new brake anyway. What I usually use is a piece of wood and a sharp blade. Try to push down 90 degrees, and as soon as you do that, it cuts actually very quickly. This is filled with oil, so at this point, oil might start dripping out of it. 
And in my case, I'm gonna attach a piece of dental floss to the end of it before I pull it out of the frame. Here it goes. With that rear hose routing figured out, it's time to install your levers. And for this step, I highly recommend that you have your grips installed as well, because you want the levers to be installed in the approximate final position. That is because the length of your hoses, it's going to depend on it. Next, remove the pads from your calipers. SLX and up are going to have a retaining a pad pin. This is a three millimeter Allen key, okay? And here at the back, you have a safety clip. Remove that one, unscrew it, and the pads are gonna come out from the top. If you have a Dior type brake, this one has a pin, so you're gonna have needle nose pliers to push it out and then remove the pads. And while we're here, if you look at the end of the hose, this is capped so it won't leak oil. When you run it through the frame, leave this rubber end attached to it, but you're gonna see it has some holes in it. So if you have a piece of string, you can attach it there and then guide the hose through the frame that way. So pretty thoughtful design. Next, install the caliper on the post mounts. Obviously, depending on the size of the rotor, you might have to use some of the spacers like I mentioned earlier. For these bolts, you're gonna need a five millimeter hex key. Don't tighten them up yet. These calipers are made out of two pieces. You see the joint right there? Well, make sure you line that up with the center of your disc. If you see on the camera here, my disc is perfectly in line with the caliper and you do that because you want the two pistons to do equal work when it comes to stopping power. So do that and as you tighten it just do it a little bit on each side because otherwise the caliper is going to start slipping around. Very important step. And for those that care about aesthetics, you might want to move this banjo orientation the way you like it. In my case, I'm going to loosen it up. It's a four millimeter Allen key by the way. Here we go, and I'm gonna move it up a little bit. Front caliper is centered to the disc as well. The banjo is parallel to the fork leg. This is an M7000 SLX. If this was an M7100 SLX, this banjo would be black and it would be on the other side of the caliper, but the torque is the same, uh, eight to 10 Newton meters. By the way, I have a video talking about calipers, compatibility between series, and all that kind of information, so make sure you check it out. Next, I've attached the hose to that retaining clip, so the bottom end of the hose is in the perfect position right now. Rear brake hose gets routed using tabs. In my case, it went internally. All that's important because next, we're gonna attach the hoses to the levers, and once you cut them, you cannot uncut them, can you? Smart Alec, I know. In order to continue, you're gonna need a couple of tools, so make sure you have them. Eight millimeter wrench. Then in each brake, you're gonna have one of these inserts and also a rubber boot. You're gonna need the ability to cut through a hose. You saw me using the X-Acto knife piece of wood. Other people use something like this, which is a hose cutter or even a cable and housing cutter. You're gonna need the hammer, to pound this insert into the hose, but these tools here are needed to actually hold on to the hose as you're doing that. In the past, Shimano included this yellow block, so you'll hold on to your hose. We don't have this inserted in the box anymore, and it doesn't make any sense to buy the tool that they offer right now. Today, I'm gonna try this, which is a piece of tube, pliers, and I'm gonna try the same thing, just to pound this in, and it should work just fine. As I remove this rubber tip, you're gonna see this mark on the hose, the witness mark, that tells you how far in this hose is gonna go when properly inserted. And the very next thing, please, please grab this rubber boot and slide it down the hose. Do it now or ask me how I know about this one, okay? And now we can decide how long we want this front brake hose to be. Front is usually fairly simple. For the rear hose, you want to think about how it's going to run together with your shifter cable. And also, you want to make sure that as you're 
handlebars rotate, let's say if you fall, you can do at least something like this. I measured a couple of times. Here it goes. And if you point this up, you shouldn't have any spilled oil whatsoever. We're gonna get the insert and just tap this in. You're gonna push it in all the way until it's flush with the hose. You're gonna remove this yellow plug and that's where your hose is gonna go. You could see oil dripping out. Grab your eight millimeter wrench and start tightening. Continue to push on the hose as you are tightening this retaining nut. From snug, give it another one eighth of a turn and stop right there. There is a little bit of oil that spilled here, but hopefully we didn't get that much air inside the brakes. So isopropyl alcohol to clean it up, slide over the rubber boot, and this brake is ready to go. So I'm recommending inserting the hoses with the lever up to limit the oil spill. However, don't tighten it in that position as the hose is going to twist when moving the lever down to position and you might not like that. Time to reinstall your brake pads and your pad retaining pin. By the way, I have a full video talking about brake pads, when and how to replace. Make sure to check that out. Don't forget that little safety clip. And you're ready to remove that lever stopper. And as you pump it a little bit, this should start getting harder. And it is right now. If the brake feels spongy in any way and it doesn't harden as you pull on the lever, it means that you got air here and the master cylinder. So you're gonna need a quick bleed. I have a full video on how to shorten hoses. Make sure you check it out. If you are unsure about adjusting the angle here, just put it about 45 degrees to the ground as a starting point. Also, the reach should be adjusted properly. In this case, you have an adjusting knob. So this should be right here on your knuckle in a normal lever position. If you don't have the knob, you're probably gonna have an Allen key to make this adjustment. If you have the ability, I always recommend integrating your shifter with your brake lever because it looks a lot nicer. So in this case, I have an iSpec 2 adapter to SRAM shifter. And one more thing before you hit the slopes, clean your disc with a bit of alcohol. And remember to bed in these brakes. Uh, SRAM has a very good video on how to do that. I'm gonna post it in the description. And that's all there is to installing Shimano brakes in 2020. What do you guys think? Have any questions for me? I'm gonna put a lot of links for videos and parts in the description below. Make sure to check them out. If you found this video useful, don't forget to like, subscribe, keep an eye on social media, and until next time, hope to see you folks on the trails, hopefully riding some Shimano brakes. Cheers guys, cheers.